Hi guys, welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Vivi and I realized I still haven't read Vivian's diary. <laughs> so let's do that before we do anything else. Andrew came and told me he did not need an assistant. He said Scott is too inexperienced and is a burden to him. What he didn't realize is that the garden has not been maintained well over the past few months, that his drunk behavior is irritating and that Scott is actually doing more work than him. Scott is a fast learner. He should be up to speed in no time. Charles was the one who insisted on hiring him anyways. Charles likes the boy. They've been hunting together quite a number of times and Charles always seemed happy with his company. I just don't understand his love for hunting. He sometimes spends more time in his hunting cabin than he does at home. I was shocked to learn that Scott has been asking around about Sophia. How did he know about Sophia? Who have told him? It must be Andrew that drunk. I told him Sophia is gone. That hallucination of his is getting worse. He needs to see Henry and get more pills. I will need to have Bernard keep an eye on Scott from now. I need to know who he might have talked to. I called Oliver and asked if he could be the main photographer for the Easter fundraising event. When he asked what the funds would be used for, I told him it'll be used to raise awareness for Paints Creek as a way to promote our town's tourism. After listening, he agreed to help. When asked how much he would charge, he simply said it will be free. I was surprised. At the same time, I appreciate his contribution for this town. Same day. The deal with Howard Medical came through just as I anticipated. Instead of being happy, I feel empty. Am I getting numb from work? Or is it that I don't care anymore? Same day again. Our dinner tonight was quiet. Charles didn't eat much. He asked me about my day, but I didn't want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to talk to him much these days. Trisha was quiet as well. She's distancing herself from me. I can feel it. She used to confide in me about everything. Now, we hardly talk. Is stopping her from seeing Scott wrong? Yeah, you know it. I don't want Trisha to be near Scott anymore. Of all the men in this world, why would Trisha pick at him? What? Why would Trisha pick him? This is unacceptable. Yeah. And so are the typos in this game. There's so... so many. <laughs> So, yeah, all right, I guess we are moving on. Okay, so I've been at it for quite a while, trying to figure out what kind of code would open this. <laughs> I even tried the key, but um, nothing nothing helped so I gave it up and then I realized that up in the study there's a picture of Father Matthew and the other priests prior to him so thinking that he was important and because the private investigator also had a picture of it I went back to the graves to the cemetery and I found the birth date of Father Calvin. So that's what I'm about to try. So I tried his birth date and yeah, <laughs> before I started, I wasn't actually expecting it to be the correct 
combination so I hadn't started recording yet but yep it was dear father Calvin this is a letter to the things that I had witnessed during my stay in Paints Creek while in attendance to Mrs. Magdalene Roberts. I have no one to confide in and I dare not speak to you in public, hence my letter to you. I accompanied Mrs. Roberts to Paints Creek on July 4th, 1975, to visit his son Charles. To visit her son, Charles. It was rumored that Vivian had a nervous breakdown and had to stay for rehabilitation for months. During that time period, Charles was all alone. He found comfort in a housemaid by the name of Sophia. They had an affair, a boy was born. Two days after arriving, we were informed that Sophia, together with the baby, had left Paints Creek. Where she went was unknown to us all. I assume most of us believed in the story, including myself. However, Mrs. Roberts refused to believe that Sophia would leave when could be part of the Roberts family. The boy that she bore for Charles would have guaranteed that. Mrs. Roberts thus initiated a search for Sophia with me and our driver, Patrick. It lasted less than two months before she passed away of a heart attack. What I want to confess in this letter is not about Sophia, although I was initiated by her disappearance. It's about Mrs. Roberts' untimely death. You see, Mrs. Roberts did have a heart condition for a while now. However, her medications have always kept her stable. Her prescription was still the same during her visit to Paints Creek, yet her condition deteriorated. The family doctor, Dr. Henry Johnson, assured us that her search for Sophia has taken a toll on her health. All she needed was to rest as much as she can and she would be fine. I know that, despite the doctor's advice, Mrs. Roberts did not stop the search. Did that create stress on her? Yes. But could it have killed her? According to the physician attending to Mrs. Roberts back home, no. Definitely not within such a short few weeks, if she has taken her medicine. Her body was never autopsied. Her son Charles wanted her body untouched and buried well. Buried well. Okay. As Patrick and I are packing to leave for home, I could not help but wonder who could have wanted Mrs. Roberts dead? Is there a connection between the affair of Charles and the housemaid, the disappearance of Sophia and her child, and the death of Mrs. Roberts? I would like to say whom I might suspect, yet I am in no such position and I am afraid that I might name the wrong person. As I write this letter, I hope you can understand what I'm trying to convey. I pray that the truth shall be revealed, should God permit. Sincerely, Sylvia Eden. Alright, so I finally was able to enter the cabin, which is weird because I've got this key for quite a while and I've tried once before. But, yeah. We're inside. It's a cozy little cabin. What do we have? Uh, random picture. See America. Let's see what secrets we can find. Nothing on the gramophone. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, church key? Looked like it. And, oh, hello, another key. Doesn't say what it is, but... What? Ah, oh, felt like there was some sound here. Yeah, I'm jumping. <laughs> Today is Valentine's Day. I wanted to spend the day with Trisha. But Charles invited me to go hunting. I was nervous, not because it's my first time hunting, but because it's with Trisha's dad. It turned out that I actually enjoyed being with him. 
I feel comfortable talking to him. I don't get it. Why did Father Matthew forbid me to be with Trisha? Is it because I'm not rich? Or because I'm an orphan? He didn't explain anything to me. Maybe he doesn't love me anymore? I feel so confused. We quarreled again today. I couldn't stand Father Matthew's preaching attitude and yelled back at him. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I'm so frustrated. Father Matthew said that I'm not an orphan. What does that mean? Does he know who my parents are? I need to know more. I pressed him to talk, but he won't tell me anything after that. These past weeks have become more difficult for me to talk to Father Matthew. Whenever we talk, he addresses only church stuff. I realize that I'm starting to avoid Father Matthew. Whenever he asks me how my day was, I did not feel like answering him. When I ask him about my past, he would always try to change the subject. I feel so frustrated. I moved out to the church. Father Matthew did not object, although he looked a bit sad. Mr. Roberts was kind enough to let me stay at his cabin, if I am willing to work for him as an assistant gardener. That way, the mansion garden can still be well maintained, even when Andrew could not come. So that's how we got the job. It's been a week since Charles gave me this cabin to stay. I still don't know where to start my investigation. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. When he was asked about the murder, he said that he went to the cabin to relax, but he was living there. So, why would he say such a thing? It makes little sense. Didn't he live there anymore? Maybe that's the reason. This is in 93, so... In two years, a lot of stuff could have happened. Did he f move back in with Father Matthew? Alright, it's been a few weeks since Charles gave me this cabin to stay. I still don't know where to start my investigation. Andrew has been drinking. Bernard asked me to bring him home. Whenever he's drunk, he would accuse himself, saying that he's a sinner. Sometimes he would mutter names that I've never heard of. Of all the names, I think I only recognized Magdalene. I just can't remember where I heard that name before. Yeah, we don't know. It's uh, your grandma? I just returned from the orphanage and found out that it was Father Calvin who brought me there. The record sheet stated that I was from Paints Creek. How could that be? If I'm born in Paints Creek, there must be records of me being born in the hospital. But I've checked. There's none. I broke into Father Matthew's bedroom today. I shouldn't have done that, but he might have something that could tell me about my birth parents. He didn't have anything relevant. I have a suspicion that it's not a coincidence that Sophia's child ended up with him. Andrew's drunk again. This is the fifth time I had to bring him home and then cover his shift. It's getting quite annoying. As I lay him down on his bed, he muttered repeatedly, I'm so sorry, Sophia. Who's Sophia? And why is he writing such weird digits? The the zero? It's like a letter in the Norwegian alphabet that you don't have in English. So it's called an ö. Uh, and it's confusing when people do that on a zero. No, just saying. Carpenter? Carpentry. Right. So he was a bit into carpentry. Yeah, what it takes to be a master carpenter. Mm -hmm. Create puzzles, hidden doors. Oh, hello. That. We need a couple more hidden doors. Yeah, yeah, we do. 
Okay, so I found a door that we can't open and this weapons locker that we can't open. So I'm guessing we'll be back here. Yeah, let's see if the key fits here instead. It should. It's a chest key. Okay. A key. Diary. I asked Andrew about Sophia. First he freaked out, saying that I shouldn't go around speaking that name. Then he said he has never heard of that name in his life. Really? <laughs> uh, that's an embarrassing lie. Is he hiding something? Why would he lie about Sophia? Somehow this makes me want to know who Sophia is. Yeah, of course. When someone lies to you like that. I asked Wanda if she knew anything about Sophia. She said Sophia used to work as a maid in the mansion for a few years until she was let go. When asked why, Wanda said she didn't know. However, Wanda thinks that Sophia is a manipulative woman who would do anything to get what she wants. Wanda resented that. So what did she get by being let go? <laughs> mm. I met Derek today and asked if he knew anyone by the name of Sophia. Apparently, he's not on speaking terms with me. I wonder if it has anything to do with Trisha. <laughs> yeah. During today's lunch break, I asked Bernard if he knew about Sophia. He was surprised that I knew that name, but proceeded to say he did not know her well. Somehow, I feel uncomfortable whenever I talk with Bernard. His cold gaze gives me the shiver. I met Dorothy while tending to the garden. When asked about Sophia, Dorothy was curious where I got that name. I told her it came from Andrew. She kindly explained that Sophia was a close friend of hers when Sophia first came to work for the Roberts family. Unfortunately, she had an affair with Charles when Vivian was hospitalized. Shortly after, she left Paints Creek. No one has heard of her ever since. Dorothy thinks that Sophia has probably started a new life in another place. I wonder if the affair was the reason everyone's quiet about it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Why, Dorothy? Why did you just share that information like it was talking about what sort of potatoes you would have for dinner? Wait, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't... I, people are different, but why would she just give all that information out to someone who works for the family? that she's been working for all these years. Why would she just dump that information about Charles being unfaithful to his wife? Just like that? It... What sort of person are you, Dorothy, to do that? I can't believe she did that. <laughs> I can't believe she did that. It just sounds so, so... Oh! Well, if it wasn't clear already, I'm guessing he knows now. Oh, hello. Now he knows. Dear Scott, I'm Sister Rachel. Although I wasn't here when you last came, I hope you remember me. As your nursing mother, I want you to know how you came to be at St. Patrick's Orphanage. On July 4th, 1975, Father Calvin came to us holding a basket with you in it. He said that you'd lost your parents and there's no one to take care of you. He named you Scott. After he left, elder sister Emma asked if I would be willing to take care of a baby. At first I hesitated because it was a huge responsibility, 
But when I saw your face, I felt God called upon me. I accepted. When you were ten, Father Matthew came to see you. He had just become the head priest of Paines Creek Trinity Church. He visited often, usually at the beginning of the month. Whenever he left, he would leave an envelope containing a small sum of money. He said it's for whatever you needed. The rest would be donated to the orphanage. I would be lying to say that I wasn't sad when you left the orphanage, but when Father Matthew adopted you, I believe that your life will be better in Paints Creek than here. Everything I sent used to be yours. I think you should have them back. May God bless you. Sister Rachel Davis Wow. So, at least he, he definitely knows now who he is. He should... The, the, the dots should be simple to follow for now. Let's see what else is here. Let's meet at our secret hideout. Code changed. Oh! 8831. Let's do that then. Let's go to the secret hideout. But first, let's read the diary of Matthew. 1975, January 16th. A few months have passed since I came. This missionary trip was harder than I expected. There is no clean water, the food lacked nutrients, and there aren't enough medicine. We have requested help from the World's Health Organization, but haven't received any reply yet. I feel so frustrated. What can I do? When Father Calvin first sent me here, he asked if I would be willing to stay for six months. It would be a good training for me, he said. I agreed. That was before I came. Six months have now passed. I think I will extend for another six months. The people here need as much help as they can get. I'm not a doctor, but I can be with them through my support and prayers. I will let Father Calvin know about my decision. Time flies. I can't believe I'll be going home tomorrow. I will miss the people here. At the same time, I can't wait to get back home and meet everyone again. Father Calvin called me this morning and told me that Sophia has left Paints Creek. How can that be? The last time we wrote, she told me she has so many things to share with me when I'm back. Was she forced? Is she hiding something? I just cannot believe that Sophia left without telling me anything. Something must have happened to her that she could not tell me. It's been almost six months since Sophia left Paints Creek. I've asked everyone around. No one seemed to know where she went. Father Calvin told me to let it go. He's right. I should not dwell on matters of the heart. There are more important things in life that need help with. If Sophia and I are meant to meet again, God will let me know. It's time I move on with my life. So at this point, he doesn't know Sophia had a baby. Okay, so to sum it up, we've learned that Magdalene is killed by Vivian and Dr. Johnson. We learn that Scott moves into the cabin and works for Charles. And Scott learns that he's not an orphan and he's from Paints Creek. Father Calvin brought him to the orphanage. And he also learns about Sophia and Charles's affair. And should be able to draw the dots from there. Then we learn that there might be a hidden door or something in the cabin. And also that Scott's friend Derek is mad at him, won't talk to him. Jealous, I guess. And the last on the list would be that Father Matthew comes back from abroad and he finds out that Sophia has just disappeared without a trace. That's what we know. 
Okay, I think it's time to wrap up this episode. So until next time, take care and thanks for watching.